Good evening and a warm welcome to today's virtual roundtable presented by Limelight Networks in association with E4M. Today's topic is broadcasters and publishers creating seamless digital experiences using the right CDN technology. Now, before we jump into the conversation and talk about the topic, here are some of the key things that I would like to definitely tell all of you. We have brought together some of the best minds from the broadcasting and publishing industry in India to discuss and share how they ensure an enhanced and pub how they ensure an enhanced viewer experience quickly, reliably, and securely. Now, me being a reader myself, I'm Khyati Kawa, your host for the day. I hope, like me, all of you also have seen the seamless transition from the physical newspapers to reading all the articles online. Now, before I introduce our speakers, I have a few announcements to make. We are live on Zoom. E4M Facebook page, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Please start sending your questions in the Q&A section, and we will take up these during the course of the discussion. Please tweet your thoughts about the webinar using the hashtag, hashtag E-numerical4Mwebinar. It's E4M webinar. Now to introduce you to our panelists, I hope all of you are ready. If you have any questions pertaining to the topic, please go ahead and drop it in the Q&A box. Our moderator will take it into consideration during the conversation. Now to introduce you to our panelist, Mr. Aditya Agarwal, Head Digital Technology ABP Network. Mr. Aditya is leading the technology efforts of the ABP digital arm, ABP Live. Prior to ABP, he has worked from, for clients including Viacom Inc., Comcast Cable, and more. We also have with us Mr. Anil CS, COO of Flowers TV. Mr. Anil CS, popularly known as Anil Airur, is the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Marketing Officer of Insight Media India Private Limited and its group companies. He has 20 plus years of experience in the media field and he's associated with the company from the inception. We also have with us Mr. Badri Prasad S, Technical Head TV9. Mr. Badri Prasad has been working with TV9 for last 16 years. Since the very beginning, he has been instrumental in the launch of seven channels and will be launching two more channels very soon. Prior to this, he worked with ETV and was part of a core team to start channels in seven regional languages and also worked in RFC and started the visual graphics unit called Mantra. We also have with us Mr. Gunjan Jaiswal, head of product and tech ITV network, digital product ninja, an ex-founder with over 10 years of experience in different domains including aviation, media, edutech, and IT services. We also have with us on the panel, Mr. Imtiaz PK, Chief Digital Officer, Media One. Mr. Imtiaz has managed multi-million IT project during his career in Oman and India. His recent project experiences have been transforming business processes with digital technologies. He also holds experience in media solutions, e-commerce, CRM, and digital marketing. Let me also introduce our panelist, Nishchal Maheshwari, Head IT India Today Group. Nishchal Maheshwari is currently leading the IT operations for the India Today Group. He is a proactive and responsive IT professional, meditator, and also a social worker. Very warm welcome. We also have with us on the panel, Mr. R.D. Bhatnagar, CTO, Denik Bhaskar Group. Mr. Bhatnagar is a seasoned professional with a career of 39 years in print and production and information technology of leading corporates in India. Mr. Bhatnagar is better known as an innovator and trendsetter in the technology sector for media and has many feathers in his cap, including setting up more than 57 print and publishing centers for the media companies. We also have with us Sarbani Bhatia, Senior Vice President IT, Dainik Jagran. With a rich experience of nearly three decades in the industry, Mr. Bhatia heads the IT function of the Jagran Group, which is one of the largest media conglomerates in the country with interests spanning across print, radio, digital, out of home and activation. Danik Jagran being one of its flagship brands is the largest red daily in the country. She has also been responsible for laying down the information infrastructure for all the various verticals of the organization, as well as evolving robust, seamlessly integrated systems and processes for all the financial areas. We also have with us Mr. Owais Baba, Regional Head Limelight Networks. Mr. Owais has a solid track record of securing key clients and increasing products and services penetration to grow market share. 
He has immense experience in the cloud infrastructure platform where he spends almost a decade with Oracle Business and then with Microsoft Azure offerings and CDN services. And to session the chair, let me first quickly check if we have uh, Mr. Dinesh Oak online. He had some technical issue. So let me quickly check. All right. So once he joins us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce you to our panelist, Mr. Dinesh Oak as well. But now I would like to introduce you to our session chair, Mr. Faisal Kawusa, founder and chief analyst, TechArc. Mr. Faisal Kawusa is a senior technology market analyst and founder of TechArc, which is into technology analytics, research and consulting services. Prior to this, he has worked with organizations like IDC and CMR. Serving leading technology brands with insights and market trends, Faisal is closely engaged with the CXO, leadership and strategy teams advising on product portfolio, go-to-market channel operations and other areas. Faisal plays an influential role in the technology domain and actively writes columns in leading tech and mainstream publications. Now, before I ask Faisal to take over, let me share the points of discussions for today. Sagar, may I request you to please put on the screen the slide for talking points of today's discussion. There it is. I'm going to give you a few seconds to just go through and know what we're going to talk about, what are the couple of touch points that uh, a panelist and moderator will be touching upon. Also here, I would like to remind all of you that if you have any questions, then go ahead and drop it in the Q&A box. We will take them during the discussion. Also, if you are uh, online and want to create a social buzz on listening to these uh, industry stalwarts, then do not forget to use our hashtag E4M webinar. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd hand over the screen to Mr. Faisal to take charge from here. A very warm welcome, all of you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, welcome, uh, all my co-panelists, uh, audiences, welcome to this show. Uh, I think, you know, we are again going to talk today something very, very important uh, because in, you know, personally, I believe in digital Ultimately, it's all about experience. Uh, you may you may develop some great technologies uh, in the background, but what customer or user values and appreciates is the experience that comes through that technology solution. And that obviously results in stickiness, satisfaction, and other such things, which of course ultimately means revenue, profits, and such things. Today we have one of the, uh, I would say, dynamic industries. Uh, no need to know them all because they let you know everything. Okay, that's how I would put it. Uh, I'm very glad to be part of part of this panel, and I think uh, we are going to have some exciting time over next, uh, say, uh, 60, 75 minutes or so. Uh, for the audience, just a request: if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. In, through the Q&A tab, and we will be taking them through in the course of uh, discussion. Let me start the discussion with uh, Aditya. Uh, hi, Aditya. Hi, Fazal. So, Aditya, you know, this COVID-19 uh, has been, I think, you know, yes, there are challenges, but there are some of the, you know, definite uh, trends we are seeing all across the industries. Mm -hmm. So how would you sum up its impact on uh, your industry per se? Just a quick round, uh, if you could give us some views on it. Well, in terms of, uh, you know, digital viewership and digital engagement, uh, after just when the COVID started, we had locked down all over the country. So, mm -hmm. you know, th there's a tremendous increase in uh, user viewership. So there's a, I will say, kind of increase something which ranges to around 25 to 50% in the viewership across the levels over there. And uh, especially a main trend, what we have seen is, uh, you know, viewership over the mobile uh, mobile devices mm. rather than uh, the traditional TV, uh, TV viewer and uh, uh, desktop viewers. So if people are working from home. So in the viewership, there has been a significant impact. Uh, since the COVID started and uh, I can see the trend is still ongoing, you know, well, it is stabilized as of now, 
but again uh, the increase is very much over there people you know used to move to the digital medium rather than uh, moving back to traditional television and all so that is a positive impact i had seen because of the covid on the sure. you know transformation i will say sure sure let me let me uh, take this question to sarbani uh, sarbani uh, what's your view on this like uh, maybe on 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 uh, on opportunities on challenges side what did covid result in yeah so covid has had a significant impact on the publishing and broadcast industry um with uh, the the impact the pandemic induced lockdown has led to a substantial increase in the media consumption mainly digital ott uh, tv and gaming also and uh, this surge in demand has it's added many new consumers and expanded to new demographics and new uh, geographies i would say uh, i know it it could be the network improvement and the pandemic uh, uh, both are to be um, you know factors for this we have seen a huge surge of demand from tier 2 and tier 3 cities as well and um, uh, the uh, with a lot of people being homeward bound and uh, willing to consume a lot of media there have been uh, great opportunities for subscription revenue as well so a lot of our uh, publications have also started the subscription on the subscription model during this so this was a huge opportunity right the um, the huge demand for ott content etc has um, uh, motivated players to innovate and to use technology to uh, you know use technology in fantastic ways to create uh, content in these limited circumstances and to distribute them efficiently because of the huge demand they wanted to ride the wave and um, so i see in all in all there have been huge opportunities you know uh, there could have been challenges with our print versions mm-hmm. when publication was hit definitely but then uh, there too the credibility uh, uh, improved many fold because of the abundance of uh, fake news at times on social media etc so so that was a plus point but however the circulation did uh, suffer a hit there but all in all for digital media i think the growth uh, the trajectory accelerated many fold it was predicted i think that uh, india would have a billion digital users by 2030 i think that right. really got accelerated considerably thanks to this pandemic absolutely we have we have digital jump started you know so yeah, to say totally, totally. yeah so so interesting <laughs> things yeah. yeah so so interesting things coming out you know we are seeing you know say adoption in mobile we are seeing new geographies getting added uh nishchit i want to you know uh, probably rope in you here and again you know understand what what's your view what's the impact uh first of all i would uh, like to say you know what covid gave to the industry is like we have moved ahead like about a 2 to 3 years in terms of the digital viewership and the acceptability in the market so it's 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 as you know uh, covid impact is on the digital industry is like we are uh, ahead of the time uh, that results and the, all the things we can going to get in like after 2 years and all these being achieved earlier so this is the biggest impact i have seen and uh, as the everyone is uh, saying there's a multifold uh, hits and uh, spikes and uh, we are like all in a plus in terms of the digital business okay great good to hear that everything is going up so far you know what i get from you people uh, uh to you badri like what what's your your view on the topic just quick introductory remarks the covid is really a challenge for the television industry especially because we never we never ever thought that the day will come that we have to work remotely and uh, but uh, the challenge is taken in a right manner and then uh if not entirely we slowly started the uh, working remotely and then finding out ways how to uh, how to do it with the res- with the available resources that is another challenge so we we have slowly started working from the uh, the the scripting and then uh, the uh, the uh, uh, graphics and uh, the the editing also we could achieve to the certain extent but not to the maximum i mean not to the extent that it is required 
but uh, yes certainly about 50% of the work as staff we um, we could do it from the uh, i mean our people can uh, could do it from the home remotely and even now also they are doing it but yeah it is a challenge at the same time it is a learning uh, learning new things that is exciting uh, as a technical person and i okay. I, I i wish that uh, i wish that uh, um, we could uh, we could get into more and more technologies using the um, the internet and then do better things than what we have uh, done so far the confidence has come that we can achieve certain things okay the remote great 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 uh coming to you ripu if i'm pronouncing your name correctly ripu what's what's your take on the situation well you can uh, you can call me rd because people know me as rd bhatnagar great so um, yeah so uh, you know the pace of development uh, on the digital side uh, pre covid was pretty much you know very slow as businesses were focusing more on uh, their hardcore content delivery or maybe in the newspapers so we had taken up this transformation journey about just a few years back and when we started you know moving our legacy applications onto the cloud and new technologies pandemic was just like you know adding a turbo booster to, to that whole effort and whatever we had planned that we would do in the next 3 4 years we just did it in flat maybe just a month so and uh, i must tell you it was what an exciting uh, experience it was that within 3 days of the lockdown we were able to move about 95% of our people working from home and it was fully facilitated by you know it and the digital uh, you know the department one of the drawbacks or one of the things that you know was actually making us more concerned was how do we you know take the newspapers to uh, the people well and in our markets as i have been you know uh, speaking to a lot of my peers in the in the industry we did not lose even a day of our print except for maharashtra where the government had taken a decision of you know closing down the all the centers but in rest of all the markets we did not close down even for a single day and uh, the circulation have come up uh, to a decent level again but i must tell you whatever you know boost that we got digitally we could not could not uh, you know we cannot say that we can sustain it because in our markets people still believe in the look and feel or the touch uh, of the physical newspaper while they have been consuming a lot of news from the digital channels but i must say it's not a very uh, you can say uh, you know um, uh, a potential or a very uh, uh, a jump that you could monetize or you can say that you are building some future business over on the digital because monetization on a digital numbers is still a far fetched thing for media companies right yes. right but yes uh, we have uh, actually been connected to our readers to both the medium uh, you know using newspapers as well as digital so one of the most thing uh, you know best thing that uh, we got during this lockdown was that we got more connected to our customers rather than we would have been earlier so it was a very slow pace when we went out to customers and meet but today uh, i can I can tell you that uh, we have a tab almost of all the customers that we have who read newspapers we 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 have that connect with them so we can connect them digitally anytime we want so that's one of the biggest things that the you know pandemic gave us that's that's great so so at least one challenge coming up how do we monetize growth is there uh imtiaz coming to you what's what's your view on you know the impact of covid on the industry thanks a lot um, to all those who have you know contributed so far in the uh, discussion level um, and i would like to avoid the repetition of uh, whoever has already been mentioned uh, uh, you know in the in the contribution level i would say that uh, the pandemic um, has expedited the you know the digital transformation process at least 5 to 10 years you know ahead in advance in the last 6 months um, the kind of uh, you know support which we have been getting from management uh, was great um, that uh, as um, you know um, both badri and um, rd patnagar was saying um, the, uh, the 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 change uh, you know um, we the digital revenue uh, from the uh, total you know revenue monetization level was uh, not big enough um, to be considered but that has changed now 
Now the attention is there from the management side that the revenue which is coming from the, the monetization from the digital channels is something which is considerable and should pay attention. So I would right. say the biggest change that has happened is basically from the management or the investors side that this is a no longer a little boy or a little sister, you know, uh, you know uh, roaming around, but is something which need to pay attention. This is the biggest change I would say uh, that has changed. The second thing from the community level, you know, the address to where we are uh, basically, you know, addressing. So there's a huge change. We would definitely say that we have a lot of, you know, uh, subscribers um, or viewers uh, from the, uh, you know, um, Middle East side, um, uh, from, of course, uh, from the NRIs of the Middle East side. And, uh, and we also had, uh, you know, both from the media one, and I'm representing both media one and Madhimo, mm -hmm. a newspaper. Uh, so both the media one uh, TV, the channel, as well as the Madhimo newspaper level, we got a huge shift from the print and the traditional broadcast level to our digital channel, uh, including, uh, you know, our app level, including to our digital portal level, including to our uh, YouTube level and Facebook level. So those, uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook, uh, and our an app and portal, we had a, you know, we, we had almost 100 percentage, more than 100 percentage growth in the last uh, uh, six months time. So this is the second thing which I would like to say uh, that from the community side. The third thing, uh, which is more important, is that, you know, from our um, clients, you know, those who are advertising, providing us advertising level, there's a huge change in the culture that they used to, you know, in, in, uh, interact with us. We definitely all are all of us are getting a network ad from the ad exchange level. Um, right. that, is, that is that is having an organic growth, but that organic growth has definitely jumped. Uh, you know that is one thing. Second thing is that apart from the uh, the network ad, we are now getting a lot of you know always on um, uh, local ads, and those local ads level has changed a lot. You know, and then it is coming to a level with our you know, expertise in, in, within the in-house level, which we have built the digital transformation and SEO level, some of our advertisers are coming forward in such a way that they are asking, can you also take up our you know, SEO uh, and you know, digital transformation level? So it has now uh, you know, given us an opportunity of a new uh, business area where we right. could you know, uh, in a mutually uh, benefit each other. So, you know, so what I want to say is that from the management side, from our subscriber side, and from our advertiser side, in all the three levels, the jump has to be, I would have, you know, imagined that the, age, the, the stage which we are here towards end of 2020, we would not have, you know, in a normal non-pandemic level, we would have reached this, this stage only by 2025. So at least a five years ahead of jump, especially in the in the regional you know um, uh, language which we, which I'm representing is you know boosted level. So there's a tremendous uh, you know tremendous investment been you know uh, you know given approvals and, and progress. So I think um, with uh, you know keeping all the the health uh, you know uh, impact which we had of course you know and then paying uh, you know um, tribute to those who have passed away. Uh, at the same time, whoever has had the the financial impact level. I would say from a digital transformation level, this has given us ample opportunity to focus. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, so there's, 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 so to say, management swing towards digital. Uh, to you, Gunjan, the same question. How do you perceive impact of COVID on the industry? Yeah. Hi, Fazal. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I agree with the uh, Mtiaz uh, and uh, Mr. Adi also. Uh, this has actually impacted the, uh, you know, the upper management to think about how digital works actually. So how it used to work is like only we used to uh, look into SEO for only websites and apps only. But now people are looking into YouTube and Twitter and everything. How can I increase my followers? How I can increase my followers in YouTube or in Twitter or on my Facebook and how I can do much more of live streamings and everything. Uh, coming from a you know background, channel background basically, so we have actually transformed, uh, we have made our prints into PDFs. So you can get our, you know, uh, PDFs of our print versions. We have also tried to, you know, go into app friendly kind of ways also like, uh, 
uh, Amazon uh, Fire Stick is there, uh, Apple TV is there. So we what we have seen is that people are actually moving out from DTH also, and they are actually going 100% uh, you know digital. And there are multiple places where we can actually find our customers which we didn't explore first that we think that they were might not not be from there. But yeah, this is something that we have actually seen. Okay, great. I think I think uh, interesting start. Uh, you know, now let's have a different view of the market. Uh, I want to, you know, rope in OS here. So OS, uh, you heard what industry has gone through or is, you know, how, how they have, so to say, embraced COVID-19 opportunities as well as challenges. So how has Limelight, you are helping maybe, you know, industry partners here or globally uh, in, in, in kind of meeting all that what has, you know, come up due to COVID-19? Yeah, thanks, Faisal. Uh, it's a great point. I think everybody put across some uh, good points. It's a, it has a both sides. What this pandemic has given us a lot of challenges as well, as well as it has some good sides as well. But I would say, you know, with this pandemic uh, resulting in the worldwide lockdown, people across different parts of the world have been confined to their homes. And because of this COVID, you know, it's impacting lives across the globe, uh, which is uh, I would say, you know, forcing us to change how we work, uh, how we learn, how we access information, or how we connect with one another, and the environment options as well. So uh, streaming is becoming uh, the forefront of this new normal, especially with Indian consumers, because now engaging with online video for an average close to five hours every day, which is the highest among the survey countries, and this lockdown has raised a demand for online content. Uh, and CDNs are ensuring uh, to provide content faster and smoother as well to the users. And this is because you know, different people access their content on different devices and under varied network conditions, because you know, we, we can see in tier two and tier three cities, we don't have that great bandwidth, that great network conditions there. But uh, there is a way to help ensure a smooth user experience by using a content delivery network provider like we as in Limelight. Uh, so we as in, you know, we operate as uh, one of the world's largest and most interconnected private networks to where we provide uh, real time streaming, live streaming. Uh, we have security services as well. We do have edge services and on demand video delivery with a with a massive uh, global private network, uh, along with our own software, and where we have the connectivity with most of the ISPs uh, in the world. So this helps our customers in getting their videos delivered to any device and anywhere in the world at high quality and with the lowest buffer rates in the industry. Because the reason is we don't rely on the public internet and where all the conjunction happens, and with Limelight, the delivery happens through our private backbone. And that is, that is the reason that we have the highest cash rate ratio among all the CDN providers in the world. So uh, in general, if I say uh, uh, all the CDNs play an important role in improving the performance for the media and broadcasters, which we are talking about right now, while delivering the content with rich media formats and uh, interactions and engaging content to the users. So uh, online, you know, uh, you know, having said this, online video continues rapidly to grow in popularity at the expense of uh, traditional broadcast waving experiences. And on average, if we see viewers globally spend nearly eight hours per week watching various types of content, and this mm -hmm. year, an increase of close to 16% of the average viewing time. So we have seen increases in consumption of content across the world, uh, like kind of TV shows, movies, it could be news, it could be uh, binge watching or UGC content and whatnot. And all this is possible seamlessly with the best user experiences through a great CDN like, like what we are doing in the market right now. Okay, great, great. Um, Let's let's now you know talk a bit into technology. So Aditya, coming to you again, I wanted to understand. Obviously, you know, uh, you know, we we heard about probably you know new new users getting added, um, you know, different types of devices out there. Uh, we we heard about you know probably opportunities of you know monetization on sites of maybe having subscribers. 
So once obviously, you know, somebody pays the expectation, you know, increases, okay, uh, in terms of, you know, service delivery. So how critical, if we may get into the CDN aspect, how critical is it in the entire technology value chain in delivering the that right experience? Well, I will say CDN is, you know, just like the backbone. If we talk about the digital distribution, so you need to have a, you know, definitely a good internet. But yeah, again, if you're missing on the CDN uh, in our digital industry, you know, generally they say uh, every two seconds matters the most. If you're not able to, if your viewer is not able to, you know, watch you have, you have been trying to deliver in two seconds, probably 50% of them, you will lose them away. So the CDN, a right choice of CDN, you know, enables us to have this, have that uh, uh, seamless delivery. But still, in terms of challenges, I will still say over the low mobile networks, we still have challenges. Uh, even with the rest of the CDNs, we still have challenges over the you know low inter internet penetration areas uh, for the users to even uh, watch the live streaming. Even in case of you know very low bandwidth streams, ranging to two or three hundred kbps, so that is still a challenge. But yeah. Uh, for most of it, like uh, if you see the distribution over connected devices, it is already increased by not not just connected devices, but uh, yeah, over all the devices, uh, the distribution was already increased by something around in order of forty to fifty percent. So, and when connected devices are again, you know, delivering the content in full HD quality, so when a high amount of data is going in, uh, right choice of CDN is you know, it is it is a must have. You just cannot do without it. Okay, okay. Uh, if I may come to you, uh, Sirbani, with the same question, um, you know, I think the last last thing that any consumer loves is to be dictated. Okay, so we can't tell them that you can watch the basics or you can get the content in you know the best experience on this device and not on that device. So there is this, you know, there are so many devices out there and consumers want to kind of consume content and data and other things on, on whatever they want. So, so what is, in your opinion, role of CDN uh, in really, really making that great experience out there? Sorry, you're muted. Every media and entertainment organization is uh, forever looking for the right media platform to overcome these challenges of uh, content delivery. Uh, because, uh, you know, the aim for every broadcast or publisher is to reduce the latency, to, you know, have a quick page load and minimal buffering and a quick uh, video startup, optimal video quality. So uh, it is only with an effective CDN uh, implementation in place that we can um, uh, we can uh, kind of overcome these challenges because a user will click away if the page load time is uh, huge. So uh, to reduce these bound, bounce rates, uh, we require a CDN definitely. And uh, especially now with the omni-channel uh, being the way forward, every user being available on multiple channels, multiple devices, even as we speak now, I think each one of us has so many devices, internet connecting devices within arms reach. So uh, it is a CDN which will help us deliver seamlessly our content across platforms and devices. And um, it will also help us cater to this huge surge in traffic suddenly, you know, sudden surges in traffic. We had not expected, you know, it's with a CDN in place that we were able to deal with that, withstand uh, hardware failures because of the distributed nature. And uh, we were also at the back of our mind, very sure that our content would be always available because it would mitigate the DDoS attacks, if any, phishing attacks, if any, have a WAF in place. So that way our website and web application is also kind of uh, secure. And along uh, with the CDN do performing these functions, the AI ML stack of it and the data insights helps us, of course, to some extent on targeted uh, advertising and help us monetize content and help us uh, to kind of build our content around uh, 
user preferences, understand the user behavior uh, a bit more than we would know without the CDN and help us deliver tailor-made uh, curated content. So all in all, a CDN is absolutely, I don't think any successful media organization today can think of surviving without a CDN. So it's kind of absolutely necessary for a smooth function. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think it's, it's great to hear that, uh, you know, the kind of significant CDN has in the entire, you know, uh, value chain. Uh, Nishal, if I may come to you, you know, CDN has perhaps multiple roles to play, okay? So if we talk from maybe the security point of view, you know, Sarbani did touch a bit of it, uh, but, you know, in your opinion, how, how critical you feel CDN is as an element on the technology, uh, so to say, secure the content and deliver it securely. And, and I think once we have that security only, then we can, uh, you know, think of monetizing it effectively you know, stopping the revenue leakages and other such things. And also, you know, users would feel comfortable in consuming that data. Uh, right, Faisal, as the, all the fellows, because as already said, you know, it's a backbone. And uh, CDN has played actually a game-changing role, you know, to provide the best experience to the user. And yes, rightly, it's uh, most secured and uh, as an individual uh, publisher here, uh, you don't need to be worry or invest a lot, you know, into the securities and uh, have the extra precautions uh, and for the security of your data and all. And the, as, as the CDN is, you know, highly distributed platform and across the world, you really don't need to worry uh, to, you know, where is where's your consumer is actually. So you get uh, best of the experience uh, and you get the minimize the delay you know, in loading all the web pages, content, and physical distances hardly matter. So CDN, in terms of security, is provide best of the uh, content in a secure manner. And it's a quality web experience to all the end users, no matter what location they are, what browser they are using, on what device or what network they are connecting from. So in these terms uh, as rightly everyone has been already concluded nobody can think about uh, uh, not the digital platform without the cdn right right absolutely uh, coming to you badri you know although imtiaz touched upon this you know in his introductory remarks you know with this digital there is nothing like regional now you know everything is so to say global okay now your 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 viewers your readers could be anywhere in the world okay and and so so again you know uh, a a robust cdn perhaps helps and you know accelerates that growth that going global uh, growth and strategy of a regional player so what's your what's your view on this sorry you are muted as you said rightly, the the, the Al and everybody mentioned, uh, we can't think of a world today without a CDN. CDN has matured over the years, and it has and uh, the it, it has matured faster than what we expected. Rather, um, the the only challenge is that one is the security that they have to uh, um, the concentrate more on uh, security and the uh, and the threats. Okay, the the uh, uh, malware threats are the uh, uh, the other threats, and uh, the security of the content. And uh, I I am from a video industry. Okay, television satellite television. See the 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 challenge in the satellite television. Uh, this thing using a CDN is a bandwidth at the um, the last mile. The uh, last mile connectivity still needs to be improved a lot. Uh, the the CDNs uh, will talk about the um, uh, about the about their performance and the the deliverables uh, only at the POC level, not at the customer level. Those uh, those challenges have to be uh, overcome, uh, and I, I know it is it is a it is a, it is not as easy as uh, I am telling, uh, rather I am uh, talking, but. Uh, Unless uh, I mean that is an important thing. I I uh, I think that uh, they have to uh, concentrate on and then um, 
uh, enough bandwidths at the last mile are uh, are much more uh, need uh, for the uh, digital growth. The the without a CDN, of course, the digital the uh, growth is not there, and we can't think of uh, any industry not uh, tele be it the television or the digital and all. But the user experience will be much more better. and uh, you don't you don't lose a, a viewer not even a single viewer uh, if there is a good uh, experience and a good uh, um, continuous uh, availability of the bandwidth uh, while stationary or on the move this is my uh, view one is the security and availability of the bandwidth to the end user sure sure uh thank you i think i think we uh, no more probably validations required how critical how important cdn is uh and i wanted to come to the challenges or gaps which probably you guys are still you know feeling are there in the solutions available you touched upon them a bit badri but you know now moving on to your imtiaz so any any areas you feel within the cdns that are available right now uh which you feel can can need some little uh, bit of enhancement to probably solve your worries of course um cdn um on a normal delivery level uh, will expedite the you know um uh, the the accessibility but at the same time uh, we do definitely have a lot of challenge um, especially you know um when the when it comes to the caching level Uh, and you know if there are some uh, you know um, insecure or you know um, uh, and censorship you know required data being published and then when we want to catch it back um, you know the the cdn do make a challenge uh, we have experienced that especially uh, you know uh, as we are having uh, the viewers from uh, across the world uh, and especially in some of the censor censored uh, in a countries uh, we have experienced uh, some of the data which is maybe not Uh, you know uh, very well censored within our you know own country uh, but then it has got a, in a different uh, censorship in a in a different country and then uh, when it comes to the cdn level and that has been you know uh, identified the with their level the level of you know a refreshment um, is is you know is an area we had challenges in the last uh, uh, couple of uh, weeks especially uh, so the caching mechanism in which how frequently you know once we are you know flushing a new content um, or, or a replaced the content level uh, uh, you know how how quickly it is getting replicated across the in a cdn is definitely a challenge i think a lot more intelligent has to come because it's not only you know sometimes it may be an enhanced uh, version or an updated version sometimes it could be a deletion or sometimes sometimes it could be uh, you know um, a, a a complete replacement so Uh, based on the content level based on the you know uh, in a the 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 censorship level of things it, there are different type of action which is required from the um, uh, from the you know cdn level so it's not cdn is not uh, just a you know static uh, data uh, replicator it has to have a lot more intelligent you know what mm -hmm. is the level which can be cached what is the level which can be delivered immediately where you know we could make sure that the user is been you know uh, served immediately but at the same time a continuous update is happening uh, so the the uh, from the traditional level from a static data being delivered it has become that uh, there is there's no data anymore you know with the static it's all become very very dynamic i mean i would still say that there are static and then a text data image data and then video data but then the dynamism of those data is becoming so important uh, level that you know how how you know, just now you could understand that if you if you look at the you know us uh, uh, election results you know you could definitely right. see different you know uh, results on different you know even leading newspapers level including cnn if you go how the cnn is replicating how the how the you know google is replicating how the amp is replicating so it's it's mainly when it comes to those type of data uh, the, the it is not only the content or a static updation it becomes much much more dynamic level so that is where i would say the the intelligence of the cdm is becoming from from a traditional level to a much more uh, complicated level because it is not only text it's not only image in a text image and video together when it comes to any industry level in the media uh, you know it's very very dynamic and so there is a lot more intelligence required in the caching mechanism of the cdl level okay great point great point uh, coming to you gunjan any any gaps you find and and you know this being one of the 
elements in the technology value chain which is perhaps closest to the consumer yeah, yeah. so what are your expectations from us you know a great cdn yeah so uh uh, like you know how google says that it's like uh, within 2 seconds the website the page load should be within 2 seconds uh, that that too for an e-commerce site and for a normal uh, site uh, they said it should uh, load within half a second or one second something like that uh, the first page uh, look should come in so what we look for is like if i am optimizing the images at my level before uploading it to my website or the app or anything so the cd should also be able to optimize and send it the request according to the network of the fellow who is actually receiving the uh, content and not only for the image i think uh, one of the biggest challenges is obviously videos now nowadays because people are more engaged into video uh, view first so if uh, the cdn can help us get into like an optimized video uh, con- uh, content so if if somebody is on a 2g uh this is a rare case but on a low end phone somewhere and he is directly browsing it so it, it should be able to like there should not be not be a buffering or a break that should happen and i could deliver my video content actually much uh, faster as compared to uh on a normal or a, a older kind of a, a server setup okay yeah. okay before i i come to uh ways uh, aditi uh, if i'm not wrong you probably have a hard stop or can we still continue for some time will for 10 more minutes okay then then okay we can have your views uh, so us you heard you heard what all the technology experts had to say about cdn okay security delivery of content uh, buffering i think analytics was one of the points raised so how how is you know probably a cdn helping in all this Yeah, Pastor. So I can hear some good points here. Like uh, Sir Bonnie also raised out some good points which Syrian can do. Which she talks about the load time, uh, the cache hit ratio, and how exactly security is very very important. Which sometimes we only neglect, uh, you know, the security. And there are three parts to this question. I would say one is definitely uh, uh, how we deliver anywhere in the world where definitely the bandwidth is low. How we ensure the uh the right experience of the users and uh what role does a uh, complementing or a good cdn technology play here so uh, see we uh, uh the or or in general as cdns you know we have the uh, geographically distributed platforms of servers uh delivering web content to end users where we minimize the time taken to load a web page and the currently increasing traffic load puts extra strain on the capacity of a cdn infrastructure so it's very very crucial not only for us for all the cdns to continually increase capacity and deliver services with high performance even in the situation where there is increasing traffic demand so i have i have myself seen you know cdn technologies have helped uh, applications amazingly on that front because when users request information on the application interface and the request has to reach only the nearest data center and revert back to the users so the signal need not travel to the original server so this makes for lesser load and cuts down congestion on the network servers which will definitely help delivering lower latency due to fewer hops so we as in uh, uh limelight you know we always help in improving the quality of the services for media and broadcasting in particular where we help with a lot of things like uh, uh some of the things which i can talk about is uh, with reducing the website load time because where the content is delivered to the website by the nearest cdn server it reduces the time taken by a website to load hence it gives the better user experiences a faster page load time and people end up spending a more time on the website as the bounce rate is reduced uh similarly we also help in reducing the the bandwidth cost because bandwidth cost is one of the primary expense for any website and if you talk about a good cdn it helps in reducing the hosting cost of the website uh, uh one point definitely which you know bodhi also raised is very very important is increasing the security of the website and mobile application because the online content uh, delivered with the help of cdn is much much more secure and optimized <laughs> uh and uh, if we talk about you know getting the content to the right user which is a critical part of the workflow 
and it can be difficult, it can be complicated to manage, but it requires that multiple formats of the same content to be available, which needs to be delivered. And in all the required bit rates, right? And, and the process is in place to select the right content for the device that the content is to be viewed on because there are multiple devices. Somebody is watching the content on phone, similarly some smart TVs or big screens or laptops, tablets, whatnot. So services like which we do have, which is multimedia device live and similarly multimedia device on demand and live push in just, uh, these kind of services help to produce content in the right formats in a dynamic way, I would say. Uh, and while moving the processing uh, to a CDN edge and letting the producer, you know, whosoever is producing the content concentrate on getting the production and high quality right. So our delivery services take care of creating all the formats and we make sure they are delivered with high efficiency and for greater quality as well. Uh, uh, one of the things which I also want to touch upon is because I, I just heard, uh, just not remember, somebody raised the point about the last mile acceleration and how exactly we're interconnected in the last mile. Uh, uh, one, uh, one of the services which we do have is about the web acceleration services. Uh, certainly, which helps to improve the performance of websites and applications by accelerating the interaction between users and applications. Uh, uh, we, while we also have a last mile acceleration, uh, where uh, we offer a variety of techniques, uh, I would say, including uh, TCP optimizations, compressions, you know, uh, delivery to the client from the CDN edge. Uh, uh, beyond this, we also uh, have a mechanism, which is the uh, a website and application device detection, uh, basically, which is the device identification with uh, configurable actions based on results, which helps you easily customize content uh, by device and deliver the optimal experience. So these are some of the things, you know, I would say, which we can do for different devices experience where people are consuming the content in remote access at different bandwidth conditions on multiple devices and also ensuring they get the best end user experiences uh, through a leading Syrian technology provider like Limelight in this case. Okay, on a lighter note, you know, uh, I think six, seven years back, we were all talking about BYOD, bring your own device. I right. hope you all have got your coffee, bring your own coffee, you know, to keep yourself uh, refreshed. Uh, that's one of the takeaways of COVID-19, <laughs> you know interactions uh, so you know aditya i i understand you have to uh, you know stop and so just you know probably some closing uh, remarks from you and also to understand you know what are your investment priorities of course i know wes would love to understand that you are investing in cdn but but what are those you know three four things uh, which you are you know uh, planning and prioritizing will this is a complicated question. I will say this is kind of a more of a trick question because, you know, uh, it is not just the CDN, but yeah, we have to invest in almost uh, all of the latest upcoming things. So, first thing being, uh, like, mainly video-centered, uh, our consumption is mainly video-centered. So, you know, uh, the first thing what I would like to invest in would be kind of, you know, new technologies for transcoding the content, video content. So that I could have lighter videos, which can you know go to the consumers. So that would be the first thing. Another main industry trend, what I can see coming quite fast is you know uh, UHD screen televisions, 4K streams, and 8K streams. So with that, probably you know that that would be a lot of data to serve in. So again, uh, to serve that kind of a data, we need to have a right CDN strategy in place so that if any of my consumers is watching over the connected devices, I should not have the fear of losing him out. So definitely uh, some investment in the systems and I will say uh, better CDN too. Again, uh, content is always the king. So right, uh, you, you, you just cannot go without any investment in content. So content will always be So that is a, you know, primary area. I believe uh, um, that all will be okay. Uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe you can talk about uh, some of the 
top three, four, you know, trends you see this industry is witnessing and, you know, that's where next two, three years are going to be. Well, in terms of digital, what I see there's a high surge, what I see would be coming in because uh, during the pandemic, after pandemic, what I can see, you know, even many, many of my friends on a personal level have stopped subscribing to newspapers and all. So people have shifted to digital mediums over there. Uh, however, there are quite a few which, you know, although, although there are many uh, which find it inconvenient. So paper still has a, you know, touch base feel. So primary that is one. And uh, video technology trend is something I see as, you know, booming in. Whether you see any industry, education, media, entertainment, uh, and even the way we are having a meeting right now or conferences right now. So a surge in video and then again, you know, technical surges like 8K videos and 4K videos. So even uh, we are not, I, I, I don't know, well, uh, even right now, you know, we have difficulty in streaming uh, high definition videos. So there will be a lot of challenges going, which are going to come along with 4K and 8K. Absolutely. So these are the challenges and the opportunities I see. All of them together. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Aditya. I guess, uh, you know, you have some other yeah, one of the uh, to touch upon. Yeah, engagement to take up. So thanks for being with us today. Thank you. For uh, this. This okay. Very nice to hear the interesting views. So thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, Meanwhile, just requesting audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A section and we'll be taking them along. Uh, coming to you, Sirbani, you know, again, uh, the same question, you know, one, what are those three, four things which you see uh, that are, you know, that the industry and essentially you people will be busy in as an industry, okay? And uh, what would that mean in terms of investments and focus? So I agree completely with uh, many of you who have been stating that videos are the hottest trend. Videos, it will be more and more videos and text-based content cannot compete with the, you know, the attraction of video-based. And now in today's mobile-centric world, people are even using their smartphones to watch and share videos of all kinds. Live streaming is a big hit. And um, the content is king, will remain, continue to remain king. But now it's more and more about context and targeted, uh, contextual and targeted text. So it's uh, very important to understand the target audience, their behavior patterns, their preferences, and have a deep understanding of these uh, data insights, which will also help in targeted advertising, so monetization comes in, which we are all interested to do. So a lot, a lot of our investments are going to be to tackle this, to, to be able to uh, transmit and deliver video content optimally with minimal buffering. And um, with the platform and CDN in place, now the next focus would be on CX, I think. Uh, we aim to provide a smooth customer experience and by providing very uh, compelling and personalized data. So we wish to build a DMP, a good data management platform to and manage, analyze the data around our customers to understand the behavioral patterns, the geographies, the demographics, the contextual uh, part of it to be able to optimize our journeys and um, serve the content because uh, which is preferred by that consumer. Because you see, uh, at the end of it, however cliched it may sound, serving the right content to the right uh, consumer is still a challenge. That is a pain area. However much we've worked on it, I think we need to work a lot more on that to understand the preferences. So we recently did a use case with Mighty Hive and we learned to build dashboards, which gave a lot of insights. But you know, even the mindset of journalists and content creators does not change overnight. So they need to also uh, learn how to use those dashboards effectively and serve the right content to the right um, consumer. So then that is one area. Then we need to work on the monetization bit and now with cookies, as I hear, slowly phasing out, I know that is going to be a challenge. 
So uh, again, having a deep insight on that and on um, programmatic uh, buying, we need to you know prove the best performance of our web. So and there has to be a lot of today's advertisers demand a lot of uh, transparency and they demand accountability and relevance. So all of that will have to be worked upon to you know be able to monetize the content more and more. Now, another trend I see is that of omni-channel, which is already set in. Um, uh, because you know p users have increasingly multiple devices and multiple channels so you can't afford to be not present all over so you, uh, and most businesses i think are investing in multiple channels right. um, uh, they have a website they have an app they have a social media presence but having said that i don't think many businesses get it uh, right when it comes to omni channel which transcends this multiple channel and um, kind of provides a very seamlessly integrated experience across all channels. So I think we need to work on that too. Um, ideal would be a place like, uh, you know, an experience like Netflix, uh, where you stop watching a movie on your smart TV and you could resume again on your uh, smartphone or on your iPad or an Amazon where you uh, add items to your cart from your phone and then on your laptop, you can finish uh, shopping. So that kind of seamless, uh, and consistent experience across various channels. We need to work on that too. Uh, most businesses are doing multiple channels, but I don't think uh, they're using it to engage and connect with their consumers, but it, it's not that integrated seamlessly. So that is one trend which has already uh, set in and has to be worked upon. So that's one thing. Apart from that, there are uh, many other, I don't know if it can be called a trend, the sur sudden surge in traffic uh, from tier two and tier three cities is something which also needs right. to be, you know, accounted for. So uh, that is one trend that will set in. So okay. our investment plan is more and more around DMP, I think. Okay. So interesting. Like, uh, I believe what it is hinting towards is personalized and, um, uh, you know, personalized content, personalized uh, uh, delivery of content and maybe, um, you know, other interest areas. That's That's something interesting. Uh, so, Badri, if I may, you know, rope in you here and, you know, I uh, want to understand your views. How do you see uh, the immediate future of this industry? Uh, what would be those three, four, five things which probably are on your roadmap for the next uh, uh, couple of years? Uh, yes, uh, the, the certainly CDN uh, is, uh, is uh, a tool to uh, reach people, a, a platform to reach uh, more number of people that we are doing uh, now. And uh, the, the uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, apart from the CDN, uh, the, the speeds, that CMS also makes a lot of difference. The, the That will give a, a good user experience. I forgot to tell you that time. So I'm adding that the CMS and, uh, will help us. And uh, uh, Presently, we started only as a text website uh, till a couple of weeks, uh, months back. And then only uh, two months back, we started introducing a video content on our website uh, because the pandemic has uh, uh, gave us more number of viewers than uh, before. And uh, so uh, the, the more, and more and more people are glued to websites uh, than the uh, uh, regular televisions. So we are introducing live uh, feed and also the VOD content, more and more VOD content. So, so right. the, the, the CDN will, uh, is, a, is a media that is the only media to reach out the people. And uh, so I, I see there the, the, the viewership uh, for the websites and then uh, the, the, the specialized content also we are planning in next year or so. Uh, only for what we, what we are not able to show it on the television, certainly we want to show it on the on our website because the, the viewer uh, viewers are uh, the, we, we get different uh, types of viewers in uh, uh, website uh, and the uh, so because the the target uh, audience uh, audience combination is is uh, huge in here and we are we and one we have to still understand the uh, how to um, uh, reach out the target audience using these videos, specialized videos, and okay. uh, so it becomes a number of channels, uh, opening up a number of channels in terms of 
uh, regular uh, television which we can uh, we which we cannot do it here in a regular manner but uh, this is easy in uh, in, a, in a digital era and uh, the, certainly in the next 3 to 5 years i would see there will be a, a, a tremendous improvement in the viewership and the consumption of uh, the uh, videos and uh, also the advertisement revenue also will increase uh, su substantially uh, mm -hmm. for the digital platforms uh, the covid also has in uh, covid is one uh, one excuse i would say uh, okay one example or excuse whatever you want to call but that has that has proved uh, the potential of uh, a digital platform for the uh, uh, any media especially for the news give them the right news at the right time and uh, viewer is there always and uh, okay. they will glue to that this is my feeling sure sure so i guess you know uh, probably personalization uh, relevancy these are these are some of the things teams coming up uh, moving on to you rd what's what's your view how are you looking at what's what's there out in future yes as uh, rightly you know picked up by all the speakers here it has to be multi channel omni channel preferential based it has to be highly customized to a customer so that's where you know the challenge is that you know the current technology uh, maybe in e commerce you get to have the direct uh, access to the customer what is buying what is actually consuming but in news it is slightly difficult to get you to that right you know individualized customer but then yes there are many technology companies that are working on it and uh, you know we also have been experimenting uh, with a couple of them that how do we reach out to an individual individualized customer that's one part the second part is even if you reach to a very uh, you know uh, an individual based on his preferences how do we now create or repurpose that content that actually satisfies the need of everybody like one rightly uh, person said that you need to have a content you know of the highest highest quality in your servers and based on the end point the person is using you know the streaming happens or the content is delivered uh, you know in a multi threaded manner a person having a real good network and real uh, nice device can you know enjoy it on a high definition on a very you can a 4000 or an 8000k but if a person is viewing the same content in uh, you know whatever, low networks and with a low device he should also have a similar experience of consuming that content so our uh, investments primarily as yes, of course content is there and content will be ubiquitous one of the important uh, areas that we will want to invest is to get a hold on the uh, various consumer uh, you know the areas where what kind of content is being consumed by what kind of a person and we are able to sort of repurpose and put that content as shravani said that they are going to invest in uh, you know dmps so i think most of the publishers are looking at because the content will be created at one source but it has a multi source of consumption so and we have to satisfy all the consumers there one important factor uh, you know a study that gave us was about 10 12 or 10 15 years back the partial attention span as we speak of any human being was about 7 to 8 seconds which has drastically reduced to about 3 seconds and it is further reducing so as somebody was saying that about 2 seconds and if you are don't making engaged in 2 seconds the person just bounces off and goes to somewhere else and that's the biggest fear of losing your customer as well as a brand so today people don't follow that if you want to follow any news like for example today presidential elections they would select a dainik bhaskar or a dainik jagran for a tv they will simply go on a google and type presidential elections in us and they get get all the choices so here is one of the challenges that how do you make it sticky and how do you make uh, you know your brand also very important that a person chooses a brand over uh, to read a particular content that this type of content will be delivered by best by this uh, say a news agency or a brand so that's where uh, you know we we will be targeting ourselves and one more stats which some uh, you know our coveted uh, panelist also put out was the fake news the uh, extent of fake news is going to be about 63% of whatever consumption we have on any kind of media now that's going to be a biggest challenge even for the most credible you know media brands how do we uh, sort of make out between a fake news and a genuine news news right. there has to be you know technology which will which has to support this 
one of the examples okay. where cdn plays a very important role was uh one of the content people also see newspapers also pick up content from you know various media that is coming like through internet or through tv or wherever and mm. immediately picks up the content looking at its uh, what you can say uh, interest value and we push that content on our medium and realizing that that was fake and by the time you sort of pull it off it has already gone viral and this is because of the cd itself because once you pull out it takes a lot of time you know to the last level when it's pulled out there and meantime mm-hmm. that you know content has created whatever influence it needs to create uh, among those kind those kind of people and especially with our uh, you know our kind of business we are into tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 and what not you know down the line and the content which is pushed or taken back really takes a lot of lot of time one of the challenge that we are facing with cdn was we were not able to get a similar result into all the markets so whatever content we pushed actually got pushed in certain time frame uh, in in you know the p1 markets or p2 markets but if you talk about downstream in the towns and villages it didn't even appear about 4 years uh, for sort of 4 hours so that is the kind of result we get so we are looking at you know where we can have a very seamless uh, you know experience with having these kind of cdns which can promise us that any content pushed to any kind of markets reaches every audience in that very particular time like for okay. example an otp has to be within a fraction of seconds today whereas even the websites today give you that this otp will last you about 2 minutes or 3 minutes that's that's not a benchmark at all so it has to be within some seconds absolutely yeah. okay okay uh, so imtiaz if you may if i may you know uh, ask you about the same thing uh, maybe very quickly if you could just take us through what do you see uh, about the future um i think um the area which uh, uh, you know uh, sarbani ma'am has uh, uh, point out the, the dmp area um, is very very important uh, in the region level we i personally had an experience of you know uh, uh, working on the blue kai uh, or active blue kai uh, dmp level uh, for a personalization level so i think the, uh, the 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 technology has to um, enable how personalized the content can be delivered especially when it comes to the you know the digital area where someone is having an app of our level so we call it as you know you know you know this this concept of the b2b and b2c you know uh, business to you know, uh, to the consumer level now to the direct b2d or or the you know direct to the customer level how can we deliver direct to the customer what is his preference level now understanding the customer is not a one time job it's an ongoing job you know you know so the dynamism is changing uh, the 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 attributes are changing the the behaviors are changing and even the people are changing and the person one person like for example what i wanted a month ago may not be the thing which i wanted today so it's it keep changing so keep on understanding your customer and you know keep on improving your uh, you know your your crm database so basically behind the dmp is basically a crm Uh, which is a customer relationship management and there you will have to work with the first party data um, which is your direct customers data right, and then your right. second party data which is your partners data and the third party data so that is i think you know enabling that and um, you know educating that to the our editorial team is the current biggest challenge so that's what i i believe what sarbari was trying to touch you know apart from having all this technology to make it understand and utilize this technology uh, to have a much more customized delivery to the editorial team is also an equally challenging things in these days okay great uh, gunjan your your views on on what do you see how the future would look like yeah yeah uh, i totally agree with everyone in this uh, the personal recommendation in general and everything this is actually the next thing Uh, where you actually understand what the customer is like and what he would like to view or read going forward but uh, what i think the forward looking forward it will be more about otts and uh, vods uh, people would much are much likely to actually go through uh, what they want to see and then accordingly oh, watch the news rather than the live uh, you know uh, the dth kind of stuff Okay, great. Uh, let's let's move on to a couple of questions from the audiences. Uh, so one of the questions is how important edge computing is for broadcasting. I think I think it's for everyone. You know, personally, I see CDN as one of the 
edge computing, uh, so to say, elements. I don't know if any one of you would like to comment on it. Okay. Uh, then I don't see, you know, uh, a couple of, I don't see honestly them to be very, very relevant for this topic. Uh, coming to you, Uwes, uh, now you have heard what, what, what these experts feel, what they have been doing, uh, and what they see is going to happen in future. Any, any suggestions from your side, because, you know, you have a global perspective also, because you, you're dealing with maybe broadcasters and publishers globally. So what is your perspective? Uh, probably, uh, what's, what's, is this, is this something that is being missed out or, or, or how do you see uh, what's happening globally with the industry? Uh, see, Faisal, um, there are a lot of, uh, definitely the considering the time, um, uh, I can definitely share some points. Regarding the media industry, uh, it, it's in the middle of a revolution and uh, uh, where a fundamental shift of power is affecting virtually every media organization. Uh, you know, rather than a broadcaster pushing content, it selects out to viewers for them to watch at scheduled times on a TV set. But the viewers are now increasingly in charge, uh, pulling whatever content they want to consume from uh, whichever media organization uh, and at whatever time suits them on whatever device they want to watch it. So for a video audience, it's all about experience. And the, and the media and broadcasting industry, uh, I would say, is going uh, uh, undergoing a dramatic changes in technology and business models. So to stay competitive, you need flexibility in your video delivery infrastructure. I'm sure like everybody also touched upon the video, how video delivery is very important. So you can go in whatever direction is required to satisfy and hold onto the audience. And uh, as a limelight solution for media and broadcasters, you know, we provide uh, some of the tools uh, you will need to manage and deliver, uh, 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 being it live streaming or on-demand video delivery with the best possible user experience to a global audience. And uh, it also helps with a variety of video workload capabilities. Uh, when I say workload capabilities, it helps to reduce the internal workload or uh, simplify video publishing, uh, reducing the capex investments while uh, leveraging the cloud resources for content origin storage and CDN delivery, uh, secures the content. One of the important things, and I believe that is uh, the future of media and broadcasters, is you know although it's it's like appealing to the broadcast quality generation, which applies to any organization delivering digital content it's probably more applicable to those organizations whose business model revolves around the delivery of video. And these organizations, you know, they, 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 they live and die by this workflow, by the video workflow. Uh, so what does the future look like for these organizations and things need to radically change to meet these new demands? Like one is kind of you know moving into the cloud sooner and because to survive media and broadcasters will need to migrate much of their workflow infrastructure to the cloud, uh, which helps them to enable these organizations and to reach massive scale without investing a lot on the capex into software and equipment, but also helps them to enable to respond and qu quickly as content you know, changes every now and then. Uh, second important point is operate uh, in a real time, I would say, because uh, the, the, the kind of industry we are into and the kind of you know, uh, the fate we are going through. Uh, the broadcasters, publishers must still evolve their workflow to operate more in real time. Because many are still transcoding files manually because we have been uh, dealing with a lot of, you know, our customers where we have been hearing these kind of feedback. Uh, there are still some cases where the transcoding is happening manually when cloud-based resources would do the job more efficiently and provide for content publishing, you know, that exceeds uh, consumer expectations. Uh, also important is, uh, you know, support of new low latency live streaming technology, which is uh, the key to improving sports and gaming viewing experiences. Uh, and the third thing uh, is certainly, which I also touched upon earlier, which is to be device focused. 
because the broadcast quality generation, it lives and die, dies by their devices. And the media and broadcasters must become device focused to ensure that content is available and of high quality, regardless of the endpoint. Uh, so these are my two cents on my thought processes to it, uh, but certainly I can address in much capacity. There are some questions. Okay, Wes, uh, there's also a question from audience and just wanted to understand, you know, uh, Sabani and others also talked about this, that the opportunity is probably moving towards, you know, non-metros, smaller towns and cities. So, so has the CDN uh, kind of graduated uh, likewise? Uh, yeah, see, Faisal, customers are facing challenges uh, with workflow complexity, performance, cost, some of the bandwidth issues in tier two and tier three cities. Uh, we are seeing demand to provide you know, more customization in the CDN workflow to ensure that our customers can control their content distribution, which is why uh, you know, we have focused on uh, our edge functions as a product. Uh, it's like similar to, you know, uh, like EC2 and Lambda from Amazon. Uh, it allows customers to deploy their own functions and code to the CDN edge, uh, effectively allowing them to create applications, custom workflows uh, within the CDN. Uh, so we are doing the, some of the cases, we are also doing the last mile accelerations, which really helps, you know, to improve the bandwidth in tier two and tier three cities. We have the connectivity with most of the ISPs in India and outside of India as well, because typically we're talking about India right now. Uh, I would say we have thousand plus pairing with the ISPs. Uh, and uh, with the kind of these products, you know, which we are investing in the infrastructure and capacities, like we recently added uh, three more data centers in India, and we don't call it POPs, we call it huge data centers, because exactly that's how we are distributed. Uh, we are investing in the technology and like, like I touched upon edge functions, with these edge functions, it helps to, you know, reducing latency, which is definitely a challenge for live events. And being able to do this for large audiences is hard. So we have focused on improving uh, our real-time streaming product as well. And we are expecting to have updates available soon, which will definitely provide, uh, uh, you know, increased capacity for live streaming with sub-second latencies. So, 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 you know, with, with a changing world, with some demands from the customer, which we keep on hearing, uh, there are some requirements from some of our customers and some of our partners. We definitely keep on, you know, increasing more into our capacities and infrastructure, having strong connections in tier two, tier three cities, because sure. uh, we're also been dealing with a lot of ad tech platforms these days. So okay. is there, video-based platforms is there, but in the ad tech space, they have primary users in tier two and tier three cities, and that's exactly what we are be working right now. Okay, I think I think we got an elaborate answer to this. Uh, thank you. So so uh, uh, we have we are we are just approaching to the end of this live uh, program. Uh, what I what I personally understood is CDN is all about probably customer delight. You know, it's not content delivery. It's more of customer delight network or whatever we may want. So without that, perhaps that delight, that user experience cannot be related. And, uh, you know, this industry is transforming like anything, you know, really, really some of the great things being worked upon, being thought around. And we are definitely going to see a lot of uh, transformation in the media uh, industry backed by technology. Uh, and, and some of those fantastic, you know, tools out there. Uh, and, and I'm sure there will be a lot of, you know, news in the media about how media is getting transformed in coming times. That's something interesting to see. Uh, with this, I would like to thank you all for sharing your time and sharing your views. I'm sure everyone in the audiences enjoyed and really, you know, got some real, real insights and benefit from today's discussion. Uh, once again, thanking you all and over to you, Kyati. Thank you so much, Vezel. I think it was a wonderful conversation. The audiences are loving it. We are seeing a lot of buzz on social media. So firstly, I want to thank all our esteemed panelists. Thank you for joining us and sharing your insights. And thank you, Faisal, for uh, moderating this very interesting conversation. So thank you so much, everybody. And I would also like to thank all our audience members for being such an active participant in this conversation. Please uh, keep a check with the E4M 
page because we have a lot of other events coming up, a lot of conversations coming your way. With that, I would like to thank everybody and have a lovely evening. Till next time, I'm Khyati Kawair, host signing off. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye.